It's your girl, Claudia Jordan. We are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in, in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our special guest co-host, T.S. Madison. What's up to the both of y'all? How y'all doing? Uh, oh, what's hello. Hello. <laughs> what's up, T.S.? Hey, hey, Carol. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't run you off yesterday. Oh, honey, I ain't going nowhere. Listen, don't nothing scare me. I got of steel. <laughs> <laughs> well, the soulmates were loving you on the show. They even had some pretty good numbers in the replay this, today, so that was nice. And they, well, I got to sit in and watch. And the love for you was there. They, they love you. You are definitely part of the Fox Soul family. Um, speaking of family, the family that drinks together stays together. So, what y'all sipping on tonight? Al, what you drinking? Hey, I'm back on my uh, buttery Chardonnay, extra cold, as you know. So, let's see what it do. Light Tito's, but just a little bit more heavier than last night. Oh, good. So you you're going to get in the in the trenches with us tonight. Oh, I was in the trenches with y'all last night, honey. But baby, oh. tonight it might get a little bit more dark. <laughs> I, I know people was like here for the mess. It was a little mess last night, but I, I think we had a good conversation. I think we balanced it out. Mm -hmm. Do you think we got unblocked? I, I doubt if y'all are going to ever get unblocked. Want to check real quick? Let's check. <laughs> Wait, you do it. Okay. Let's check. I think I'm still blocked. I can't even find him on here. Unblock us, Shay Shay. I'm still blocked. <laughs> Why am I still blocked? Oh my God. Messy, messy Tuesday. Didn't say anything bad about him. Anyways, we are going to keep mentioning this until Shay Shay unblocks myself and TS Medicine. That's all. All right. Hey, before we get started, we have some Oscar related news. Coleman Domingo has been nominated for Best Actor in the Leading Role for the biopic Rustin, and Divine Joy, uh, Joy Randolph, Sterling K. Brown, and Jeffrey Wright are also nominees. We got some people of color this year, uh, but the highlight is Daniel Brooks. She is nominated for Best Supporting Actress in her role in The Color Purple. What do you think about this? I'm going to go to our uh, uh, Grammy Award winning guest here, T.S. Madison. What do you think about this? Uh, honestly, I think that um, she did a really good job playing uh, Miss Sophia, and but I'm a little angry that they snubbed Fantasia and Taraji because it's like, all right, you got Best Supporting Actress, but the, the lead actresses really came through there and tore it up. Like, I saw another side of Taraji that was, like, extremely amazing. And for those women to go forth and, you know, share that kiss and that love scene just a, a tad and get all the heavy scrutiny that they got, you know, from the public, it, it, it's definitely uh, worth a nomination. But we but shout outs to Danielle Brooks because she did make me say, hell no. <laughs> All right, I'll is that from the movie? Yes. <laughs> okay, there you go. You can tell I didn't see it. Um, I will say this though, and 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 this reminds me of when um who who said this? Was it was it Issa Rae when she was on the carpet and they said, "Who are you going for?" And she said, "All everybody black." Mm -hmm. That's kind of how this resonates with me. Uh, do I feel some kind of way because they snubbed Fantasia? Absolutely. Um, and I don't think it was right. I don't think it was cool. Um, everything that they prepared us for, the press tour, how she was dressed, how she just came into her own, it felt like it was a run for a nominee for the Oscars. Um, the flip side of this, it didn't happen. And then I thought about it, maybe it's not her time. What we saw with Fantasia was a, just a whole new person um, blossom. And in that blossoming, we found that she is going to be an actor now, and we need to get prepared for her in the future roles that she's having. This one might not have happened, and I'm glad it didn't, so it didn't sensationalize her ability to act, because she did a really good job, according to the clips that I saw and what everyone is saying. But I'm also glad that now she is forcing the uh, Hollywood execs to take her serious as an actor, not just a one-time blow up. That I like. Uh, the mm -hmm. other thing that I like is that three black men, three black men were nominated. I think that's huge for this year. We haven't seen this many nominees in, a, in, in this category for the Oscars in a while. So thumbs up on that for me too. 
Yeah. Um, all right. Well, you know, I, I think being black in America and being in the entertainment business, you're almost used to the snubs because that's kind of what they've been doing. That's why we got to keep going and support our own shows until they get it right. Now, speaking of the color purple, the film was su snubbed in the best picture category. Fantasia, who plays Celia in the film, unfortunately, of course, we just discussed, did not make it in the running for best actress. Do you think this film deserves more praise? Do you think, what do you think? Do you think they're dooming it from the beginning? I, I, I feel like they are a little yeah. bit. Oh, go ahead, uh, Maddie. Well, here's the thing. I think personally, the film was great. It was a, it's a it's a film adaptation of the musical, and I think that some of the people went in there thinking that it was the, the Steven Spielberg, Oprah Winfrey version from 1984 or 82, mm -hmm. which whatever year it came out. And so, you know, they it, it was a musical. Now, girl, <laughs> I'm not trying to be shady or anything, right? <laughs> here's a I never ever tried to be shady, but I just have to speak my mind. Uh oh. Um, I did. There were certain parts of the movie that I, I I wanted to be connected to, like that I was connected in the original film, um, especially like when the sisters were separated and 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 Mister was beating their hands on the trees, separating. Like I I didn't get an emotional attachment to the movie until Sophia went to jail. In, in the musical. But again, this was a film adaptation of, um, of the musical. And years ago, they didn't get any um, award nominations uh, because of, uh, you know, it being a black movie and, 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 you know, Steven Spielberg producing it. Like nobody didn't want to do the film the very first time that they did it. And so, you know, I'm glad that they've gotten nominations, you know, th this year, this season. Right. I'm going to tell you, Claudia, let me tell you what I liked about watching this all unfold. For one time, finally, we got to see a black film get coverage for a year. You usually don't get that type of rollout from these um, from these movie houses. You know, usually only Tom Cruise gets a year of watch what happens and watch how this unfolds. Or maybe an Angelina Jolie may get a whole year of promoting the movie. I enjoyed getting a whole year of seeing how this was made, how it was chosen, how the characters were chosen, their development in their roles, and they all played out on, on social media and in the media. I like that, you know, so they decided to snub us. That's bad. But I do like the fact that we got a year to see a project of wonderful black female actress, wonderful black male actors wonderful black producers and all of this that we kept us engulfed for a year or was the real tea that taraji told them people down about her pay <laughs> and what they didn't go uh, i mean i think it does affect it a little bit because i haven't gone yet but then again i also not a fan of music musicals but i am a fan of black cinema so i am gonna go even if i go to the movies and buy a ticket and don't stay for it, I'm going to at least do that. Right, yeah, I can see that. I think we need to do that for the first two weeks of every Black film, because that's what they be looking at, you know? Um, you kind of have to, and also check your ticket stuff, because what they do will do is you buy a ticket to a Black film, and they will give you a ticket to a white film, so it doesn't count against the numbers, and then they can justify, this is why we don't give big budgets to Black films. We don't make our money back, and it'd be all fake news. Um, yeah, we did get a lot of coverage with this film. Unfortunately, there were so many discussions about the film. The media, again, only wants to pick up on the negative and mm -hmm. need to pick up on the positive. And I said here at Fox, so we're going to continue to show the positive. So, yeah, fantastic acting, very talented people. And um, I know they all will be around for a long time doing big things. All right, all right, moving on, let's get into some more topics. Notorious groupie Selena Powell claims that she slept with Iman Shumpert. She says she felt bad afterwards and allegedly approached Hannah Taylor in Miami to apologize. What do you think about these claims, Al? What do you think? I didn't like any of it. Selena Powell, let me tell you something. You are a day late and a dollar short. This is useless. It's late, it's thirsty, and it's tacky as hell. And how dare you approach another woman telling her that you slept with her man? How childish is that? Who does that? Now, everybody know what you do for a living. Everybody know what you've done in the past and what you're doing still to make that cash register ring. Leave it at that, okay? Keep it cute, because you don't want to mess with these two right here. And you're not going to be able to step into the, the, the chat talking about who you slept with a year ago. A year ago, maybe I would have been interested, but now, not so much. Okay. Maddie? 
Well, Selena Powell, of course, honey, hoes do what hoes do. But here's the thing, right? For me, I felt that uh, that whole situation was in trouble when we found out that the Schubert, Schubert's uh, have an open relationship or, or, the, or they are allowed to bring third parties into the bedroom. I always tell couples, honey, the moment that you open Pandora's box, when you get rid of the closet, honey, the only thing left inside is hope because everything else is out. And right. ladies, if you got a man that you can't keep on a leash and you think opening up your bedroom to uh, all the other women and, and everything else that he wants to get into is going to keep him. Cause a lot of you girls out there right now are lesbians uh, by default. A lot of y'all are on y'all knees right now, licking up another woman's box <laughs> by default. Okay. Because that man won't stop by cheating. default. By default. Because <laughs> that man won't stop cheating. But here's the thing. Miss Mamas is the is the reason for her own demise because in in her marriage because she publicly said that and hoes gonna flock to, to whole things. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, I think you're asking for it. And I, I think at the time, you know, you you feel like you're sexually in tune with your partner. You're like, ooh, this will be fun. This will bring spice, but it also brings a lot of scallywags like Selena Powell. Selena Powell. I can't just blame you, Selena Powell, because you only got to do what these men allow you to do. Now, everybody in the culture knows who Selena Powell is. She got famous off of saying all the men she slept with. She's a 2023 superhead. Except superhead was smart enough to at least write a book, write a book. capitalize off it, and be a really damn good writer. I read her book in four hours. I could not believe it. Selena Powell goes on Instagram after she sleeps with people's husbands, sleeps with, gets rappers to get, like, get, you know, let her them her into their lives and singers, and they're dumb enough to keep lining up for this snitch. You deserve mm. everything you get when you mess with a Selena Powell. I'm sorry, I don't feel bad mm. for that messes with this girl. Iman, Iman, dude, my, bruh, you've been a player for a long time, and I mean player by an NBA player who has been sought after. You're a sexy man. You ain't new to this. You should know better. This girl's calling card is telling people about who she, she ain't about to keep no secrets and why men are so easy to manipulate. Oh, I ain't gonna say nothing. It's different with you. Why would it be different? She gets her social currency from her proximity to celebrity. You gotta look out for these leeches that latch on to celebrities. And that's the only reason they're famous. They're not famous without their celebrity attachment. They are celebrity ticks. Sucking blood out of celebrity ball sacks. That's what they do. Well, they all better get a subscription to ZocDoc. <laughs> Good plug there. All right. Happier relationship news. We have a new couple alert. Oh, who is it? I mean, this has been out for a second, but Common confirmed. Confirmed now. Before it was rumors, he confirmed that he is in a relationship with Jennifer Hudson. He said, I'm in a relationship with one of the most beautiful people I ever met in life. Are you here for this couple? Al, since y'all kind of looked alike a little bit, someone compared you to him. <laughs> I'm going to go to you first. What do you think about this? I get that a lot. Man, I wonder if I was like available and straight, would I have dated all those people? Hmm, the questions. Well, let me tell you something. You know I'm a sucker for black love. I love young, black, successful couples. Common is a successful rapper. You know, Jay hood can sing, and she's now a te television host. She has her own show. They are both from the south side of Chicago, so I just feel like everybody from the south side of Chicago speaks their own language in Chicago, so they're perfect for each other. Um, the only thing that I have to say about this, I do wish them the best of luck. It seems like this may be the right fit finally for the two of them. But remember, Jay Hood, and I love both of you, you brought him on your show and interviewed him to talk about your relationship. You have opened the entire door for everyone now to walk in and comment and have a say about it. Now, we have said on this show a thousand times, if we could all take something back in our lives that we've done in the past, and that is let people into our personal bedrooms too soon. So I've got my fingers crossed. I got my toes crossed, arms and legs crossed for you too. But don't get mad if you start popping up on TGIF and we're talking about you because the door and the mittens are off. Okay, Maddie, what are your thoughts? Do you think this couple's gonna last? Is Jay Hud the one's gonna be able to lock common down? 
Al, you got your fingers crossed, your toes crossed, and your necks crossed, honey. But the, <laughs> but the question is, how many more crosses is Common going to have on his list? Uh oh And when I tell you that man ain't got no type, Jennifer Hudson, Tiffany Haddish. Erica Badu. Erica Badu. Serena Williams. Serena Angela Williams. Rye. Angela Rye. Taraji. Listen, I don't understand any woman that runs to a man or, or, or want to lock up with a man that has a long list of, of uh, different types of women like that. Like, common, you might be the common denominator in any of these situations. So my whole thing is, J-Hood, we celebrating you now, but girl, keep your eyes open and <laughs> keep your eyes, your ears, and go through that phone if you got to. Listen, don't give us light-skinned brothers a hard time. She liked her light-skinned brother, and so did all those other women. Just just admit it. I just would, too, but, but, but the check got to clear. <laughs> they both make great money. What check are you talking about? Baby, listen, if you're going to pay me, pay me for my pain, and it's definitely not <laughs> me. Carmen, please don't let this end the way all the other celebrity relationships have. You've had a lot of public relationships with a lot of high profile women, and we were rooting for you in a lot of them. Like, I really thought him and Angela Rye. Tiffany Haddish and him, I thought that was an odd pairing, but like, she seemed really happy. They both did. I've seen them out in public. I like Jayla, uh, Jay Hud, and she's been through so much with the tragedies that happened in her family, and she looks like she's in a really good place. My thing is this if you're not ready for the long haul, don't go public with this stuff and hurt our girl because we're going to be mad at you. Yeah, we're going to be mad. We're going to be mad, but we're going to say we told you, girl. The sign is all there. Go that's to the left. <laughs> you two buy humbugs. Y'all don't believe in romance. Y'all don't believe in love. No, well, we the... do, but, like, listen, if this was a woman that had this many high-profile celebrity relationships, this show, Al, you know you would have it. <laughs> Al would already had a pie chart. And you know. Like, <laughs> and the oh, in the 1987, right. she was and who this one, who? and then and she was this one, and you would have all that. So I have to give the same to the men that do it, too. He's had all celebrity relationships, well, a lot of celebrity relationships. I just hope when the... That's exciting, right? Two celebs and people talking about you. I hope that when it wears off, I hope it doesn't wear off for him and it's just not a celebrity thing. Because I want to, I, I, I do love happy endings, Al. I promise. I love a happy ending. But I like, him the male Selena Powell. <laughs> we got to go to commercial, y'all. Or at least the male Lori Harvey. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, okay. Jesus. Ooh. Moving on, coming up next, Dave Chappelle has some words for Cat Williams. And later, Waka Flocka has a question for Donald Trump. And he is a supporter of Donald Trump. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. What's going on, Claudia? I'm in the White House, and if I'm not on the show tomorrow, then something <laughs> happens. You're in prison. <laughs> DGIF. Listen to what you just said. You are broadcasting your show from the White House. If that is not the hope and the dream of the slaves, then I do not know what is. Live and interactive. I just met the White House press secretary, and she knows me, and I think she knows me from T. I said, I have to go broadcast. She goes, oh, that's right. You're live. And I'm like, you know about us. On Fox Soul. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Meet the scam. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you! But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. We got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. <laughs> All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you but know the person, this? Because I speak English. Um, <laughs> proxy.
Welcome back to TGIF. I often say a lot of times the show is in the commercial breaks because that's where some other tea gets spilled, right, Maddie and Al? <laughs> We're going to say that for when we do tea after dark one of these days. Okay, moving on. Dave Chappelle recently stated that Cat Williams is wrong for shading only Black comedians. He said he only eat their N-words. He didn't say anything about these white boys. Now, social media seems to have cats back on this one. Someone wrote, he came for them because they sent for him. Another person wrote, I'm very surprised at Dave, especially since he did the exact same thing Kat did, exposing the industry many years ago. So what's this really about? Maddie, let's go to you first. What's your take on this? First of all, Dave, I need you to, uh, since you're addressing Cat Williams, I need you to address that situation where you said you never wear a dress, and I seen you over there, honey, playing uh, uh, Rosie. What's that woman's name from the uh, Howard Stern show? Uh, Robin? Robin. Robin. I seen you up there with that lipstick and stuff on playing Robin. So wait, we, wait, wait. We, this is news. Where, when? Where, when? Oh, girl, Lisa, I send you the clip. <laughs> <laughs> I was so messy. He had he was over there. Uh, while you addressing Cat Williams, address you playing uh, over there playing Robin with that lipstick on, child. With but, the Halloween? No, I don't know what it was, but he said he wasn't gonna never wear a dress, but yet, but yet here we are, honey. Anyway. If somebody send for me, I'm coming. And I'm not coming regular. I'm coming with bats, bulldozers, bulletproof vests, and butcher knives. I'm coming hard. So all those people that Cat Williams address, they addressed him first. And see, this is the problem that I have with people when you uh, respond to something. It don't matter when you respond. It just matters how you respond. You can't never hit me in my mouth and then turn around and tell me how to hit you back. He came through like Hurricane Katrina and Andrew combined and told those people into many, many pieces, honey, and went on about his business and did his thing. And everybody, and I mean every single body that he hit, responded. Mm. And no one said he was lying. Nobody said he was lying. Al, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. I have a different perspective, maybe because I'm the black male on this panel. I, I feel like individuals that he spoke on the black men that he spoke on are extremely successful in their in their craft. Mm -hmm. They make millions and millions of dollars, something that us black men don't get the opportunity to do. I can understand him talking about them, but I, I can also understand that I didn't like the way he put down a whole bunch of black men. I just don't like that. And, and they're his colleagues. They'll, those are some of them still consider him their friends. I just feel like there could have been a better way of having the conversation without being so derogatory against everyone you were having the conversation about. It just didn't feel right to me. I wouldn't feel right doing that to my colleagues. I wouldn't feel right doing that to other successful black men because the struggle in the comedy industry as well as in the entertainment industry is real. And the last thing we need to be doing is beating up on ourselves or each other. But that's how we beat up the most. People be smiling I know, it's sad. and working yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I will say yeah. this. I don't think he came for them real bad. I think he responded. I think he, I think people were shocked because a lot of people don't have that level of honesty in the business. They just be fake. Oh no, we're going to just squash it. Oh no, it's fine. No, it's fine. He, I don't think he didn't call no names. He didn't call nobody out of their name. He basically talked about comedians stealing people's jokes. And then what did the internet do? They went and found the actual receipts. And then people mm. like Mark Curry, who I love me some Mark Curry, he felt he's been wronged. He said this before, but he didn't have the platform that Cat Williams. I think he showed mm. shed a lot of light on what a lot of comedians get away with. So it's big bank take little bank, right, in the comedy world. Mm. If someone's super famous and they go to a small, a smaller comedian show and they hear a set, they hear a joke, they'd be like, oh, that's dope. And if I go do a Netflix special, everyone's going to hear me say it. I'm going to get credit for the joke, right? Mm, and then right. no one hears the little guy. I think he spoke on something that happens a lot. I'm a comedy connoisseur. When I moved to L.A. in 1997, I only went to comedy shows every Monday and every Sunday and every Wednesday for years, right? And that's how I met, became good friends with Mark Curry, Jamie Foxx, Corey Holcomb, Melody Camacho, Lou Nell. Those are my friends. And I see how frustrating that is when you come up with a brilliant joke mm -hmm. that is your um, material and someone takes it. I think Kat is an outsider because when you're a truth teller, hello, you get demonized and vilified. 
And I don't, I, 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 if, if he was, if I go back, I don't remember him calling any names. And if he did, I'll correct myself and say you're right. But I, I don't remember him being like, Oh no, he definitely called names now. But what he name called, did he I say? Mean, he, he's he's like it's 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 how it's unfolding, right? It's not necessarily what you said, and if it was wrong, I'm not saying what he said or anything that he said was wrong. I just don't like him attacking because look at the aftermath of it, right? So the aftermath is you got over 50 million views, and you have 50 million views around the world of people interpreting our black entertainers and having something negative to say about each one. I personally don't like it. You also also then have the overflow of going on Saturday Night Live as a parody, which is opens it up for white people in general in the industry to say, see, they can't even get along amongst themselves and look at all that it has created in the problems that we have now in black comedy. I personally don't like that. So I get what you're saying. I get it. But sometimes the social responsibility that comes with being such a large megaphone causes you to like rethink things sometimes. And I just feel like it could have been a better way of him presenting all the information. But like Maddie said, they all talked about him first, like all of them. And he came in there like, let me tell y'all something. Sutton said, said this about me. That ain't really how it happened. This person said this. He was mad that they had a platform to talk about him and no one pushed back. And he's, you know, I, he did say some stuff that wasn't true. He, I don't think he read 3,000 books in a year. I don't think he runs a 414. <laughs> I don't believe that. But I don't think he's wrong for responding to being falsely um, uh, represented. You know what I mean? When it comes to those jokes. But, you know, I know we got to move on. Cat Williams, I have reached out to Katie Obert from the movie Friday at the Next to get you on the show. I would love to have you on the show and you can tell us your side because, well, again, and maybe we'll get 1 million views, I don't know. All right, another comedy uh, world news, Kevin Hart is asking for a restraining order against Tasha Kay. He's also demanding for her to take down the interview she did with his former assistant. Now, during the interview, the former assistant claimed that Kevin Hart was cheating on his wife, Aniko, and that he was a, has a gambling problem. What do you think about this, you know, with in light of the other lawsuits and the other cases and Tasha Kay, you know, She's been really in the news a lot this past year. What do y'all think about this? Whoever wants to go first. I'll go. <laughs> Let me go first. <laughs> Get it all, Kevin. Get all of it. What does that I, mean? And I'm, and I'm being very light on her. Get all of it. She's Don't a low-down, like... dirty, foot-dragging, Black foot, scaly wet, bald headed, <laughs> nasty line. I, it's so much that I want to say, but I ain't gonna say it on Fox Soul. But I most definitely will say it on the Maddie in the Morning Show. I don't live for her. I don't like anything about her. I think that she's she's very untrustworthy. She's not to be her, her own husband. Don't trust her. You ain't been reading the depositions. They've been asking her what happened to all that bankruptcy money, honey. What 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 happened in the bankruptcy and all those trusts that you you put together when when that judgment came down on you and the husband over there saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. How you don't know nothing in the trusts and trans reading? Everything about her is a lie. I might have titties at the top and a ding-a-ling at the bottom, but I stand on that. That is a walking lie right there, a full-fledged L-I-E. And whatever happens to her, whatever happens to her, she brought it on herself. God protect her children, no matter how big their heads are. Uh, yeah, Claudia, is that your friend? Al, you go ahead and give your commentary, please. <laughs> this is all I got to say. You know, Kevin, this is just brilliant legal team. This is, is, is he's he's touching on all the legalities that he's supposed to touch on. He's supposed to go back to her and ask her to take it down. He's supposed to go back to her and 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 give her a restraining order. He's supposed to go back to her in all of these legal um, uh, legalities that he's supposed to cover before he takes her ass to court. I'm Don't confused. worry, she going to jail. <laughs> I'm she confused. going to jail. I'm confused, though, because you would think she would have learned her lesson by now, right? You would think after she she stands so ten toes down, you'd think she knows something that the rest of us don't know. But obviously, in that Cardi B case, she didn't. So that's my question for Tasha K in this situation. You're standing ten toes down still again in the midst of another lawsuit. Do you know something that we don't know? Or is this just how you are? You stand 10 toes down. You're not going to back off. You don't care how much you get sued and how many times people take you to court. 
I'll tell you what, she gonna be standing 10 toes down there on the side of the road, honey, selling plates and root for rubles for those children, honey, to, <laughs> to get them some business about themselves because she ain't gonna have a dime and she going to jail. Oh, okay. So um, when it comes to the story, I, I've asked that too, like uh, with the other cases with the Cardi B stuff and all that, we know about that, it's been highly publicized that maybe she does have some information that we don't know because why would you want to go down that road again if you didn't really have it? I think um, she would she would know more than anyone about the damage I could do if you're wrong. You know, mm. this Kevin Hart thing, I will say, it is a little bit weird with the, the this entire case with his former friend, um, JT Jackson, coming forward and saying basically he had to take the fall for some of his stuff, for some of Kevin's stuff. I just think this case is way bigger than what any of us know. Um, I know some people involved, and I'm just like, oh, yuck. Um, I'm going to just not speak on this until I have more of the details of my damn self, because I want us to be accurate here on TJF. And there is, a, I want to reach out to JT. I want to like reach out to Kevin. I like to reach out to some of the people around this, because... I want us to get it right here at TJF. I really, really What do. we got right is, where is the, why you hid those trusts, Tasha K? Oh. Why did you hide those trusts from the bankruptcy court? You to, you went down there to file bankruptcy, honey, because you was trying to, to hold that money from Cardi B. But baby, 2.8 million is due now. N-O-W, girl. It's due now. For Go down there and get you a few of them rubles, honey, and pay that woman her money. Okay, well, I'm going to go to commercial. Coming up next, Waka Flocka has a question for Donald Trump and later find out what we would do in crazy situations. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome inside the black box. So you guys ready to have some fun? Forget the acting studio. I'm here with you guys. Creativity will find its way. It doesn't matter what the ethnicity is. Television and movies are the mediums of stereotypes. Just because we all have the same color don't mean we have the same experience. Your uniqueness is your greatness. Welcome inside the black box. Every Monday on Fox Soul. Scene one of the three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, man. I love you, too. What's going on, Claudia? I'm in the White House, and if I'm not on the show tomorrow, then it's not happening. <laughs> you in prison. <laughs> TGIF. Listen to what you just said. You are broadcasting your show from the White House. If that is not the hope and the dream of the slave, then I do not know what is. Live and interactive. I just met the White House press secretary, and she knows me, and I think she knows me from T. I said, I have to go broadcast. She goes, oh, that's right. You're live. And I'm like, you know about us. On Fox. We got a few new phrases the kids are out there saying, and I want you to tell us what you think they mean. McMillan and Mara. Donald Duckin. I went to graduate school. <laughs> <laughs> Every Thursday. To avoid terms like this. And this is what my life has come to. All right, next one. Cambridge. Okay, Mr. Harvard. Proxy beef. Oh, I know what this is. This is when you don't have a problem directly with the person. How did you but know the person, this? Because I speak English. Um, <laughs> proxy. Welcome back to TGIF. You know, here at this show, we like to definitely do things and share stuff with you to make your life a lot easier. So here we go. Now, life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should your payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Now, Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work. Up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically prepaid, repaid from your next paycheck. Now, if I needed to use something like earning, I use it for an unexpected expense. You know, I'm remodeling my house right now and it is getting pricey. And I'm kind of thinking about doing it for this tile wall I'm putting up. Um, Al, if, uh, you know, you ever see a need to use earning or would you? 
Absolutely. Definitely. Like when there's an unexpected gift you need to get for somebody or an unexpected car maintenance issue that you're having that's stopping you from getting to work to get your check. This is a good time to tap in and get earn in so that you don't have to worry about those high interest rates of a short term loan or a payday loan. That's right. All right. Well, make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about earning, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Go ahead and download the Earning app today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, -I in the Google Play or Apple App Store. Now, when you download the Earning app, type in T, T-E-A, under podcast. When you sign up, it'll really help the show. Thank you so much. Now, that's T-E-A under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earning.com slash TOS for details. Earning is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. This is fantastic. You can go ahead and borrow from yourself instead of from others. Promotional consideration furnished by Earning. Now let's get back to some more topics. I tell you, Tasha can get some Earning in. <laughs> Lord, can we not have a beat? It's a maximum of $100, right? A week. Well, she definitely need it, honey. She's going to need it. She's going to need some bail money, too. Who put this topic in the goddamn <laughs> line up for tonight with T.S. Madison here? With T.S. here. <sighs> Ernie.com, Tasha K. Ernie.com. Waka Faka has an important question for Donald Trump. He tweeted, Dear Trump, abolish Christopher Columbus Day. As what's called a black man in the United States, this holiday is a spit in our faces. Do you agree with Waka, Al? Uh, I can't even comment on this, <laughs> honestly. <sighs> First of all, isn't Waka Faka supporting Donald Trump? The last thing we heard, he's supporting Donald Trump. For him to take that momentum and then pivot with this ask, it just seems immature, silly, and short-sighted. We have way too many issues going on in America with the African-American community, with the LBGTQ plus community, with, with affordable housing, education. We have so much going on for him to damn take a stance to support Trump and then take a stance in a black lean in saying that you want to rename Columbus Day because that's what you think is most important. It's just immature at best. All right, Maddie. Well, you know, I don't expect much from Waka Flocka when it comes down to um, uh, the thinking process. Um, you know, he supports Trump. I mean, and I like Waka Flock and I like his mom, Deb. But, you know, everybody has their own reason why they support Trump. And um, my thing is, th they saw that stimulus check come through for that little $1,400 or whatever. And they thought that he saved black people. And that's mm -hmm. all you have to do is wave, you know, government cheese in front of the government folks, honey. And, and they feel like they've been saved, you know, mm -hmm. at, Mind you, the Biden administration, um, I, I'm I'm on the fence with a lot of that, but it's it's scary to know that that he this man still has the ability yeah. to run for president of the United States with all the indictments that he has and all the things that he has done. And you talking about abolish Christopher? All you worried about is Christopher Columbus Day. <laughs> I'm going to have to piggyback on that with you as well. Um, I am not sure what's happening with at least 20% of black men being swooned and won over by Donald Trump. I think it's a masculinity thing. They have perceived masculinity, which I think is fake as hell. Um, anyone that has listened to what Stormy Daniels had to say about sex with Donald Trump and his mushroom shaped peen didn't have great things to say about him. So why we even like really believe in this, like this super ultra masculine thing about him. I'm gonna say this, Waka. I like you, I like your mom too. Uh, your music bumps, I love it. But I just need people with influence to, it just, if you're not gonna say something super meaningful, please don't because right. you have a lot of people that rock with you and they're gonna be influenced. Yeah, we can do the performative things and get rid of a, a Christopher Columbus Day. While you're doing that, Donald Trump getting rid of a woman's reproductive rights. While you're worrying about getting rid of Christopher Columbus Day, they're getting rid of diversity inclusion programs that are the only reason some of these corporations that make billions of dollars of, off us bother to hire black and brown people and women. 
So worry about those kind of things that actually affect your life than the Columbus Day thing. Y'all complain about, oh, all I gave us is Juneteenth and Biden had a Juneteenth celebration. But then you have someone, then, then you ask for this from Trump. Trump said on day one, he will be a dictator. He will be a dictator. I don't know if the word democracy scares some of y'all and you don't know what it really means, but taking away the, the right of the masses to vote and agree on something and putting it into the hands of one unhinged person with a vendetta against a lot of people is a scary thing. Mm -hmm. That's how Russia got Putin. That's how China got their president that is their forever president now. It wasn't always like that, y'all. Trump admires these people, and he's telling you to your face what his plans are. We worrying about Christopher Columbus Day. <laughs> I'm worrying about if I got raped and I was pregnant, and I could get pregnant with my, with my old ass, that my state of Texas will make me a felon if I dare get an abortion. I'm worried about being taught African American history the correct way. Okay, you he talk about Christopher Columbus, and we we have an African American history taken out of the school system, and a, a a new African American history put in that's not even even to what Christopher Columbus uh, discovered. Pick your battles, black men, and stop being so impressed by fake masculinity that ain't even real. It ain't even real, y'all. Keep it, keep it locked, because coming up next, we find out what we would do in crazy situations, and later, Kim Kardashian reveals her new business ventures. We'll be right back. What's going on, Claudia? I'm in the White House, and if I'm not on the show tomorrow, then it's not happening. You're in prison. <laughs> DGIF. Listen to what you just said. You are broadcasting your show from the White House. If that is not the hope and the dream of the slaves, then I do not know what is. Live and interactive. I just met the White House press secretary, and she knows me, and I think she knows me from T. I said, I have to go broadcast. She goes, oh, that's right. You're live. And I'm like, you know about us. On Fox Soul. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Welcome back to TGIF Soulmate. Have y'all ever thought about how you handle yourself and you were placed in the middle of an unexpected situation? Well, we'd love for you to chime in and uh, have some fun on hashtag WWYD. What would you do? All right, y'all chime in and want to hear from y'all. Take a look at what an older sister did after finding out her teenage sibling was in a nightclub. What would you do? Have, what would you have done as the adult in this situation if you saw your 16 year old younger sibling in the club? Maddie, what do you think? Personally, I probably would have let her stay in the club. Really? I, I would have let her stay in the club. Girl, I snuck out, snuck out the window. 
I did all types of things at 16 years old, girl, honey. You know, I wasn't even a virgin anymore by then. Really? So, yeah, yeah, no, yes. I probably would have not to not for her to lose her virginity. No, I wouldn't. I'm not promoting that. So, so soulmates don't get down there women about that. But we all have been young. We all snuck out. We've all been in the club having a party and having a good time. And the only person that we was worried about was mama. I ain't worrying about my older sister or no big <laughs> sister coming in. I'm like, girl, if you don't get off that microphone, girl. <laughs> right. You me like that. You ain't my mama. Alan, what would you do if you were the adult in the situation? Oh, Claudia, can I ask a question? Because you know, there I'm curious. Maddie, don't take this any kind of way. This is just information collecting. When you say 16 you were you lost your virginity okay don't please don't take this the wrong way which virginity did you lose like were you, oh, oh, were I'm you a golden, trans then no i'm a golden gay i've never been with a woman honey i've I've only been with men oh okay got it all right really? so were you trans were you trans when you were 16 like how what like how does it okay, i knew i was trans. how does the I sex knew, happen well i knew that i was trans when i was about uh, 92. And I don't, I think that's probably, I was about 16, maybe 15, 16 when I saw the crying game. And mm -hmm. I was, cause I, I had been trying to figure out like what I was, like, was I gay? Was I this? You know, but then when I saw the crying game and I saw deal, the character that played deal and mm -hmm. she had little boobs at the top and she still had her piece. And, I, and she was the in between, like she was man and woman. I said, like, Oh, that's me right there. That's what I am. Mm. Um, you know, because you know, when you first, discover who you are the first category you fall in is gay right and i'm yes. not and i'm not gay because right gay don't really it's not really match attractive you. to me it doesn't right. it doesn't match me and it's not attractive to me so men have always been attracted to my femininity so by me being feminine i've always attracted men that were that i that identify Mm. As sexual men, and so mm. I, I've lost my virginity way before. So, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, I was all up in your business. We didn't get. What would you do if you was the adult in that situation? What would you have done, Al? Oh, okay. I just had to ask that. I, I, this has happened to me. I used to go to the club with my older brothers when I was like 15, 16, and I've had my sisters drag me out the club only because they're like, you know, this looks irresponsible for my mother and my father. So I, I would, you know, leave the club and come back the next week. And honestly, I, I, that's how it happened. Um, I wouldn't embarrass my loose. I do have a younger sister. I wouldn't embarrass her like that because I'm, I'm putting her on blast. I would probably just go to be like, yo, you know you ain't supposed to be here. I like that you with the shits because I'm with the big sisters with the shits too when she was younger, but I probably wouldn't put her on blast like that. I, but I'd probably be like, come on, let's, let's go. <laughs> okay. Social media is very much victim blaming after footage went viral of a student being hit on at, on, hit at an intersection. Someone wrote, she has no survival instincts. All she had to do was jog a little bit. Another person wrote, you're supposed to look both ways before crossing the street. Too many people just keep walking because they have the right of way. The right of way won't matter when you're dead. What do you think you would do in this situation? Do you think your survival instincts would have kicked in? Or would you have gotten hit? Al, let's go to you first. I definitely wouldn't have gotten hit because I'm a New Yorker. And when we cross the street, we look both ways. We look both ways again. And we keep looking while we're walking. So I definitely would not, hopefully, in that, in that situation right there, I would have kind of skipped out of the way. And then I would have probably kicked the car and left a dent in it. All right. Maddie, what would you do? I would have been the driver. <laughs> really? Okay. I ran her ass right on over. Girl, get out of the street. The street is made for cars, not asses. Get out of the street. <laughs> All right, y'all. In other car incident news, a woman chased down a hit and run driver. Take a look. Nah, bro. Nah. I got his license plate. Nah, son. You ain't going nowhere. Bro, oh, he's about to crash into everyone. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. All right, I'm going to ask you both, what would you do? But I'm going to go first on this one. I definitely would have chased some, someone down because I'm like a champion of the underdog and the unprotected. Oh, I'm going to find you and help because you don't rent. That could be me, and I hope someone would help me if I was hit. Mm. Maddie, shake it ahead. No, what you think? You ain't chasing it. Yes, I already got your tag number, and if I see you riding through traffic like that, you own something, and it ain't no way that I'm going to let you hit me. You can hit my car, but you're not going to hit me and keep riding like that. No, I got your tag number. We good. 
Okay. Al, what would you do? Yeah, I agree with TS. I would, I definitely would follow just to get the tag number. After I got the tag number though, I would be calling the police at that point. I wouldn't be following. All right. Coming up next, Kim Kardashian reveals her new business venture. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Scene one of the three, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yes. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I'll probably do. I love you. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. Soulmates, hit that like button if you're enjoying the show. All right, Kim Kardashian has been named the new brand ambassador for Balenciaga. Kim stated, for several years now, Balenciaga's designs have been a part of my many looks and some of my most iconic fashion moments. For me, this long-standing relationship is built on a mutual trust and a commitment to doing what's right. Now, not too long ago, Balenciaga was under fire for exploiting children. What do you think about this, Maddie? Let's go to you first. Well, let me not sound like a hater. Congratulations, Kim Kardashian, on all the things that your coochie got you. Congratulations. <laughs> I thought it would have been me because, honey, we actually did some of the same things. And I'm only a fraction of a fraction of a fragment, you know, from the spaces that she occupied. But I, but we thank you. Thank you for being the blueprint of, you know, OnlyFans. Thank you for being the blueprint of showing us how to scream, yell, holler, and have your mama go exploit you for a dollar. Mm -hmm. We thank you for all the things, you know? And here's the thing for me with Kim Kardashian, because I don't want to sound like a hater, because I get a lot of things that I work for. Let, let me go ahead and re go back and repeat it. I get a lot of things that I work for. Um, and not to say that Kim Kardashian didn't work, because, honey, we we, we were part of the same field for just a split second. But we appreciate <laughs> her for her contributions to the things that she did. But my thing is, they give and give and give and give and give and give and give to this woman. I mean... I can't take away that they, you know, know how to flip brands around and they know how to use their social media to do the things like, you know, I can't take away that. Maybe it's those two or three candles that they light every night uh, with those people names and faces under it. Honey. Oh, my God. Are you saying she's a witch? Well, I've been saying that those are those are the wisdoms, girls, baby. So, you know, maybe it's that. Maybe it's Where do I get these candles from? Honey, go go on YouTube and look up Wicks of Wisdom and you'll see Chris Kardashian. She's definitely for the infomercial for the Wicks of Wisdom. Honey, we knew that they was destined to do whatever they do from the first time that I that I found that on YouTube and those candles were being lit. So there's nothing that's gonna come out of the out of out of the air that's gonna, you know, shock me 
from whatever brand deals that they get. It's probably written under a candle as we speak. It probably uh -huh. Kanye's name is probably under that can candle. Pete Davis's name was definitely under a candle. If you don't remember, she had that he she gave him candles with her face on it, and he was lighting it in his room, honey. And next thing you know, he was enamored in love. So I'm not shocked at any brand deal or 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 or, or ambassador deal that she come because it's probably written under a candle. I'm going to say this about this story. Um, yeah, they definitely know how to flip. I mean, they, I used to hang with Kim back in the day, a long time ago, like 2008, at the very beginning when the tape first came out, and she was very, I mean, you know, it was the beginning of her, of, of where she is now. Um, I would just think that after all that negative press that Balenciaga got with, like, ties to, you know, the really weird-ass uh, advertising with kids and kind of being linked to child, like, abuse and exploitation, I would think this would be a brand to stay far away from. I, I really am surprised that she would do this. She doesn't need to do this. She has a lot of money. She's not hurting for bread. So I'm kind of surprised that after that bad press, now before, I get it if you didn't know. But once you know, why would you want to be in business with a brand like that when you don't really have to? You just write the name on a, a candle and it'll all vanish. <laughs> I think she's probably doing it because she knew that she leaned very hard on Kanye to make her a fashion icon and make her a staple in the fashion commit in the fashion community. He's no longer there. You can tell her dress has definitely shifted since he's no longer there telling her what and, and how to wear stuff. So in order to keep that importance in the fashion community, to keep that presence, to keep that influence, she tried to uh, partner with one of the largest fashion houses that are in trend for a lot of people all right well singer ellie uh l king is catching heat after butchering her tribute performance at a concert celebrating dolly parton's 78th birthday uh the performance took place at the grand old opry in nashville now can l king was highly intoxicated and was cursing up a storm as she forgot the lyrics <laughs> the venue ended up closing the curtain on her and her band. They said, oh, hell no, not up in here. What do you think is going on here, Al? I, geez, Christ, you can't, dis that's so, everything about her is disrespectful. First of all, I didn't know that she was Rob Snyder's daughter. Did y'all know that? Anyway, how dare you? I think it was disrespectful. Everybody knows that Dolly Parton, you do not play with the queen of country. She's a pop culture icon. She's been in the business for seven decades. She's got so many songs that people have, have that have charted, that people have remade, like, <laughs> Country music fans don't play about country music and her going on stage saying you brought these that you all should never have bought these shitty tickets. That's number one, she said. And then she said, I hate to tell you, but you're also not getting your money back. And then she butchered the queen of country's song. Everything about this is wrong. Everything about her should probably go away. And she needs to be reprimanded. I don't know how that happens in the country music, but if there's anything called cancel, she needs to be canceled for a little while. Well, how, we, how we gonna cancel her? We ain't cancel Pat LaBelle for tearing up those lyrics over there at um. Oh no, who is she? Who? Oh, uh, Tina Turner. Turner's, Tina uh, Turner. Tribute. Now we ain't cancel Pat LaBelle. Yeah, but she, you know, first of all, Pat LaBelle wasn't drunk. Second of all, Pat LaBelle didn't say, "I can't believe you all got these shitty tickets." And guess what? You're not getting your money back. How do I you know? She, how do we know she didn't think it? Because you ain't getting <laughs> not with Aunt Pat. You ain't getting no money back with Aunt Pat, baby. Miss Pat ain't giving you back a time. Why am I back ground sex? I just felt that this was completely disrespectful and not cool. Dolly Parton has really contributed a lot to the culture and a lot to country music. And I just feel like that this this just wasn't very nice. Here's my thing. If you have stage fright and you need a little drink, a little beverage to do your job, that's fine. Take the edge out, but you're not supposed to drink on the job to get tore up where you can't do your job. Now, this is one of the few jobs where it's okay to drink here. We can have our opinions, but even with that, you can't go too far because then you're going to say something that the network got to apologize, the venue got to apologize. You know what I mean? You get yourself in a lot of trouble. Right. Have your little drink, take your little, the edge off, but come on, lady. To get that wasted, were you doing all of that and saying that? Do you think it's going to be easy for you to get booked after this? Yeah. Like, it's going to make you that's why you pay people like that with a check. That's right. <laughs> Can we see our picture one more time? Do they still issue checks? <laughs> I do. 
I would have wrote her a check so good, honey, and call over there and put a nasty stop payment on her. <laughs> Yo, a stop payment is like in today, like getting blocked on social media. Like, yeah, it really you, know, is. you get your little check blocked, you're not <laughs> cashing it. All right, fun time tonight. We're going to see what the follow up going to be from tonight now. I want to thank my co host, Al Reynolds, and T.S. Madison for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Make sure you watch the replay tomorrow. Stay tuned for Fox Soul Face Off, and we'll see y'all back here tomorrow. Y'all be safe and be good out in these streets tonight, y'all. T.S. and Al. All right, so You ain't having no bond. Oh, my God. Bye.